Hello and welcome back to the Red and White podcast. Um, today, uh, quite a special episode, something a little bit different. We've got a BBC Newcastle reporter and commentator of the Sunderland game since 2003, Nick Barnes. Nick, thank you for joining me. No problem. Yeah, how are you? Uh, good, yeah, all good. In yeah, these, um, uh, straight in circumstances. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, how have you found the, the last few weeks with what's essentially been like a, a second lockdown? Um, it, well, it's been a strange one because uh, I was tested positive with COVID a few weeks ago, so I had to self-isolate for a week, so I missed the whole City game. Well, I listened to it on the radio, but uh, wasn't able to go to the game. Uh, of course, with this second lockdown now as well, there's a BBC policy that we're not allowed to travel to away games. So we have to um, commentate on those off the stream on uh, uh, the TV in the studio. And again, that's um, different. It's difficult, um, frustrating, but it's uh, it's the sign of the times at the moment. Um, and that's going to be in place for the foreseeable future, I think, until at least March, uh, yeah. if not possibly beyond. Yeah, I can imagine it being quite difficult to, to commentate the game when you have to watch the stream as opposed to being there because you, you just don't get as um, as, as wide, wide of a picture really on the stream. You you know, you might only have the, the, the ball and the six or seven players that are around as opposed to the, the, the full pitch to see. And I think you can almost predict what's going to happen next a, a little bit more when you're actually in the stadium because you can see other players' movements and it just makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, very much so. You've got that periphery. Vision. I mean, in certain cases, you know, for instance, a prime example of that is when uh, there's a goal kick and the, the camera pans onto the goalkeeper, but you've got no idea of where anybody else is on the pitch because you, you just can't see them. Uh, or, or when substitutions are about to be made um, and little things that happen off the ball and, 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 and so on, all that, which is all part of the bigger picture, which you just don't get um, watching it on a stream. And always at the back of your mind as well, You've got this fear the stream is going to go down or, you know, you've got or you lose the link. And um, that is another, you know, of course, it's a concern with your game as well, because you'd always lose the line when you're doing a commentary. But it's much more rigid. It's much more, uh, if you like, it's been tested over the years. So so you've got much more surety and reassurance when you're at a game commentating that you can overcome any sort of problems that might arise. But it's uh, less the case when you're, you're, you're reliant very much on, um, you know, a, a, a TV stream, which is, uh, you know, I think by the very nature of these things, it's probably a little bit, little less um, sort of uh, the, the links aren't as strong as they probably are with a more definable landline. Yeah, definitely. The, sometimes the, the streams can buffer quite a bit. And um, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's bad enough for me as a fan sitting there watching it and, you know, the, the, the stream buffers are at pauses f- for a few moments and, and that's, you know, that, that, that's irritating, but even more frustrating if you've got the, the responsibility of commentating on it. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about kind of you and getting on you a little bit. So obviously you grew up far away from the North East. Um, what kind of football did you watch growing up? Uh, well, I grew up watching, um, as we all did in my time, the, uh, the, the big match on a Sunday afternoon. Um, largely was the was sort of our access to football a- across the country. Uh, and that was a, you know, that was a big watch Sundays. It was about an hour long, I think. Um, and then I started going up to watch Exeter City um, week, week in, week out for, for a good few years before I went to university. Um, so, yeah, my, my sort of upbringing was, uh, you know, I grew up as a, funny enough, a Tottenham fan because my dad was a Spurs fan. Um, and, and, and as I say, watching you know, the football on the, on the TV and going to Exeter, who played in, the fourth division then, although the first season I went to start watching them, Bobby Saxton was the player manager and he, he got them promoted to the then division three. Uh, so they, they were, they were good times. It was a good team to watch. Um, I've subsequently had conversations with Bobby about that time. Um, back in 1976, that was, uh, I remember going with Bobby, we were walking out to one of the training pitches when Roy Keane was manager at Sunderland and we played a, uh, behind closed doors, <clears throat> sorry, a charity match, uh, walking out to the, the the pitch with Bobby and reminiscing and Bobby, we were going through the whole of his team from 1976 at Exeter. Um, so that's, that was, that was my sort of upbringing with football. I mean, I, I lived and breathed football. I loved it. I mean, when I wasn't, you know, as soon as the big match had finished, I'd be out with the ball in the garden or 
were ever you know playing kicking kicking a ball about uh, any chance at primary school and school to to, to get a ball down in, in breaks and play football we, we take it um lived and breathed it absolutely loved it and you know whatever the weather i'd go up to exeter you know you'd be standing on the terrace in, in hail storms in rain in thunder whatever um because you just 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 loved it um so i lived and breathed it yeah do you still keep an eye on exeter's results now and, and oh yes yeah. there's a i'm, I'm in a um a facebook group there's the six of us who we used to go up together to, to games uh, and we we have a predictions league now for Exeter every every game. Um, no prize at the end of the season, but we have a league table as to who's predicted. I mean, this season we're predicting what's the score at half time, what's the score at full time, and what's the time of the first goal. Uh, and points worked out on that. Um, uh, unfortunately, at the moment I'm bottom of the table. I guess it must be difficult. You've got to got to follow. Up. Another club as, as much though to, to to keep an eye on them. Um, I assume that was like mates you used to go with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were all at um, <clears throat> mostly college together. Um, yeah, I used to go out to Exeter on my own to start with, and then then I went to college, met up with uh, you know, these four or five mates, and we used to go to to, to games. Um, we still keep in touch now. Um, a few of them still, well, most of them have moved away from Exeter, actually. One lives still still in Exmouth and he manages to get to home games. Uh, the rest of them are scattered across the country from Bristol, London, the Midlands. Uh, they do meet up once or twice a season to go to an away game, or not not being able to, obviously, this season. Uh, and so they have a sort of a, a weekend and take in an Exeter away game. Uh, but just always fall, and I've only been able to go once. It was a weekend in York when Exeter played there, going back a few years now, but they generally always seem to fall on the weekend when I've got a game with Sunderland, so I generally can't can't make them. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we, 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 was sports journalism always a path you, you wanted to, to get into from a young age? I haven't said, like, yeah, you know, you had a real passion for, for football growing up. Never, never even entered my head, actually. I mean, because I went to university, did English, didn't have, uh, uh, they like to use that, phrase roadmap don't they now in politics I didn't have a roadmap of what I was going to do when I left university I just fell into radio basically and because I had an interest in football when I was on the radio station at Radio Devon I used to go up on a, a Saturday help out the sports editor at Radio Devon then who someone actually went to school with um, he now runs a radio station in Exeter but uh, I would go and report on Exeter Plymouth or Torquay for the away team because back then back in the um, mid 80s late 80s not many stations did full commentary I mean that was something that that came about a few years later so most local radio stations used to have a sports program on a Saturday afternoon but rather than commentary of their teams they would have reporters and they would do sort of music football mix but they wouldn't send a reporter to the away games so when teams were down in Devon I would uh, act as the away reporter for them as I say at either Exeter, Torquay or, or Plymouth so I used to go around the three clubs when I was at Radio Devon I then moved to Radio Cumbria in 1988 uh, and I wasn't doing sport then I used to, to work on the sports program as a as a tech technical operator um, but then I, I sort of uh, got more involved in the sport and when the sports editor left Radio Cumbria I was sort of I inherited it really because I was the, the one person on the station who had an interest in sport we weren't doing a huge amount with Carlisle United on, on Saturday afternoons the big focus in Cumbria was rugby league so the main sports program in Cumbria used to be on a Sunday afternoon to do commentary of the rugby league matches um, and I just felt that we were missing a trick really with Carlisle United because it had quite a, it, although at the time they were struggling, they were this sort of the lower reaches of Division 4, had a big supporter base. And I just felt that if we could get agreement from the club to travel with the team on the bus to cut down costs, would we be able to do full commentary sort of week in, week out, home and away of Carlisle? Well, it all, it, 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 it all came together. We got permission to do that. And so in 1992, I started... Um, commentating on Carlisle, doing them home and away. Uh, and we had a sort of proper football 
show then on Radio Cumbria on Saturday afternoon. Um, and uh, so that's that's how I got into to commentary, basically. Yeah, interesting that it, it, it didn't seem almost like a, a plan for you to get into it, considering um, the job it is you've done now and for so long. Um, so your time at... Um, uh, uh, your time in, in, in Cumbria, uh, in, in Carlisle, would you say that you kind of pushed to, for the commentary of their games and maybe the, the BBC weren't necessarily uh, too keen on, on having a commentator, but it, it was you pushing for it that, that ended up um, like making them do it? Um, I, it yeah, you know, it's, it, it sounds like simple when you put it like that, but I mean, it was more um, a sort of, uh, you know, it wasn't a difficult sort of, scenario in terms of getting it to work because we had the ability to do commentary because we were doing we were doing it week in week out with the rugby league and in sometimes straightened circumstances because the facilities at rugby league grounds weren't necessarily great so we knew that you know it, the, the, the actual concept of commentating from the football grounds was not was not difficult because every football league ground has the facilities because Radio Cumbria had the facilities for us at Carlisle. Whichever game you went to, the, the respective local radio station had the facilities at their grounds. So we knew, you know, that the network of uh, the, the network of facilities was there to be able to do it. Um, it was more the will. It was more having the will to do it, you know. And, and luckily, the manager at the time at, at Radio Cumbria and the manager at the time at Carlisle United, who was Aidan McCaffrey were both um, both embraced it this thought thought felt it was a you know it was a good idea we could keep the costs down because of traveling with the team um so it, it, in that sense you know it wasn't difficult to draw it together um and, and i think we we proved almost straight away actually that we had an audience and but what what really gave it a kick i mean it was just just sheer luck really that we started it in 92 and soon after starting it uh, Michael Knighton arrived at Carlisle and, and, and his arrival really was the catalyst to, to, to boost not only our audience for the football, but the, the attendances at Carlisle United as well. So it took off at Carlisle United and we just happened. I mean, it was just sheer luck that I took over um, covering Carlisle in 92 that, you know, it was time with the arrival of Michael Knighton so that those two things came together um, and never really looked back. Yeah, then you started um, commentating for BBC Newcastle. I believe Newcastle United first. Um, how did that come about? Well, basically, um, to cut a long story short, uh, in 1998, 97, 98, I fell out with Michael Knighton, the owner at Carlisle. He sacked uh, Mervyn Day, the manager, um, and most of his coaching staff. Michael Knighton took over as manager at Carlisle. We had a sort of... Uh, fiery relationship that season and and the upshot of it all was uh, at the end of the season that summer uh, I knew that I was probably going to get banned the following season and it just so happened that it was the 1998 World Cup um, a lot of BBC network staff went to France to cover the the World Cup which left um, you know gaps back in London to to cover the sport uh, on the uh, the network stations for, for radio. So myself and Ian Dennis is now uh, the chief football commentator at Five Live. We both both applied to go to London for four months as sports broadcasters. Um, and we got the job. So we were basically Ian and I were uh, doing sports bulletins uh, and, and other bits and bobs for sport on um, all the network radio stations. One, two, Radio Four, World Service, Five Live. Um, and, you know, I did some rugby league for them as well. So I spent the summer doing that. And then Ian was the Newcastle United commentator, but he was leaving Newcastle to go to Leeds. I knew I wasn't going back to Carlisle United because I wouldn't be, you know, wasn't going to be allowed. Uh, and so Ian suggested that I apply to cover, the, to cover Newcastle, which I did. I got the job. Uh, Ian went to Leeds and I started in the... October of 1998, well, late September, October 1998, covering Newcastle. How did that compare to uh, cover in Sunderland? Uh, it, it, it's chalk and cheese. It's, they're, they're, they're different clubs. I mean, it's, um, you know, I can say, you know, quite 
securely now having been at Sunderland 18 years that you know it's much more uh it's always felt to me to be more of a I think I use the word community in a strange I mean I don't think I think not necessarily the right word but it feels much more a club of the people if you like a club of the fans uh the Newcastle ever did I mean I was, New, I was at Newcastle for five years don't get me wrong I mean it, it, I had a good five years there and there was no I had no issue with the club or the fans or anything like that it's just they are different uh the the, the, the perception you get uh working within is different um I've always felt uh, that, that Newcastle the hierarchy at Newcastle was a little bit more um didn't embrace the, the sort of media and everybody as much as they've always have done at Sunderland. And you always felt there was more of a connect with the, the um, hierarchy at Sunderland than we ever felt at, at Newcastle. Um, I mean, that, you know, in, in fairness, that was a time when Bobby Robson was manager. They were in the Champions League and you know, they're in the top part, in the top sort of six of the, the Premier League. So, you know, that might have coloured the way that the club worked and how, it, you know, related to, to people so I think you have to put that into context but um, I've, I've always certainly felt more uh, in my own skin if you're more comfortable in my own skin with Sunderland than I ever did at, at Newcastle but that you know that said I you know I, you, you can't look back as a, a sports journalist and not appreciate that the five years I was at Newcastle you know I was covering Champions League football European football um, in the top four of the Premier League and uh, and so on, and, and working with Bobby Robson for that, you know, Rude Hullet. So that, you know, on my CV is always something that, you know, I look back with, you know, some pride. I mean, it's, you know, that, that was a, a you know, a, a fantastic five years, if you like. But it wasn't a five years that um, I always, you know, didn't, didn't, I don't, it didn't sit as comfortably with me as it, it always has at, at Sunderland. But maybe Sunderland, myself and Gary Bennett starting out. Um, fresh, if you like, in 2003. Maybe that's because we made it our own, if you like. We 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 started afresh. It was a new project for both of us, and I think we uh, we embraced that. And I think you know we 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 think we're quite proud of what we've built up over the last 17, 18 years. And I think that that is a part of why it feels so much more comfortable being at Sunderland than it was uh, at, at Newcastle. Yeah. Um, so. How did the, the, the move to, to Sunderland come about then? Basically because um, Mick Lowes, who used to cover Newcastle United for Metro Radio, had, had left Metro. Um, he joined the BBC. And uh, when he joined, he was basically, he joined as the studio presenter. But it was felt that um, his experience with Newcastle, he'd been there for so many years, and he was really the voice of Newcastle United. And, and, and it was felt that it was being wasted, being in the studio on a Saturday afternoon or whenever the matches were. So a, a decision was taken to, to bring him back to do Newcastle United and um, then then to move me to cover Sunderland. Um, and so that's how it came about. Basically, that was it in a nutshell. 